second one is a statistical interpretation of this population mean of mileage of existing and new car engine are different what is a practical interpretation of this it says average mileage of existing and new car engine are different are not the same null hypothesis says mileage provided by both the car engines is the same that means there is no difference between these two and your null or alternate hypothesis says it is the same and i confuse you guys yeah <laughs> right null hypothesis says the mileage between the two car engines is the same alternate hypothesis says it is different right same and different let me put that here same different do not worry do not buckle things would become extremely clear as in how we move on here is a hypothesis testing right? you use some kind of statistical statistical right some test statistical statistic that is used as criteria for selecting null and alternate hypothesis you might end up using z test or t test or f distribution depending on the context depending on the data which is provided to you two errors in hypothesis testing this is extremely important let us understand this using this case study suppose someone has accused you right and put a case against you what would happen cops would arrest you and present you before the judge right someone has accused you the cops have arrested you and they have put you before the judge right this is what happens right whenever a judge starts off with a case he assumes that the accused is innocent and if the judge says that or if the judge gives a judgment that hey you are innocent and if in reality you are innocent that is a right decision so judge has taken no action on you he's saying hey you are innocent and in reality also you are innocent that's a right decision but assume you are innocent but the judge has given an evidence against you he has given a judgment against you he says that you have to serve a sentence of 5 years because i found you guilty based on the evidence provided to me so what is happening here though you are innocent though it's not is true you have been sentenced right to imprisonment that is an error that is a mistake that has happened and this mistake or error is called as type 1 error or alpha error right this is the probability of committing the type 1 error and when you call it as type 1 error error that you reject null hypothesis all the null hypothesis is true you are innocent but judge is rejecting the fact that you are innocent errors do happen that is called as type 1 error by the way all right the next thing is alternate hypothesis suppose you are accused cops have arrested you and presented you before the judge if in reality you have committed the crime and if the judge sentences you to imprisonment for 5 years then that's the right decision you have made a mistake you have committed a crime and you are put behind bars that's the right decision by the way however think about the situation you have committed a crime but judge says that there is no lot of evidence for me to prove that you have committed the crime so i'll release you i'll say you are innocent and release you that's a mistake that's a grave mistake you have committed a murder suppose and the judge is saying that i do not have sufficient evidence so i'm releasing you that is called as beta error or type 2 error type 2 error is you accept the null hypothesis all the null hypothesis is false and the probability of committing type 2 error is the beta error or the beta risk and one more thing if i have really committed a crime and if i were to be sentenced to some imprisonment then there is a lot of evidence that i require right there's a lot of evidence which are required so as and how i get more and more evidence 
I keep throwing away from my mind that you are innocent. During the start of the investigation, or the, do, before the start of the case, the judge has filled his mind with the thoughts that you are innocent. And for those thoughts to go away, there has to be a lot of evidence against you that you have committed a murder. More and more evidence you provide, higher are the chances that you might be imprisoned. And there is one more very interesting thing called as p-value, the probability of you making a type 1 error. And in most cases, this alpha value is selected as 5%. That means there is a 5% chance that you might go wrong with the decision. And there is a 95% chance that you might always be right. So you are taking that 5% chance. This is a management decision. In few organizations such as nuclear plant, rocket launching station, right, missile launching station and all that, or healthcare related products, your management might say that, hey, I do not have the provision to give you 5% chance of making a mistake. So I will bring it down to 1%. I will say that there is only 1% chance that you might make a mistake. 99% of the times you should be right. This is a management call, right? But otherwise you stick to this 5%. Most business decisions accept this 5% of mistakes. That might happen. You're a human, right? You cannot be right 100% of the times. You might go wrong with your decisions. But how much percentage is a management willing to give you? How much leeway? Is a management willing to give you, right? And that is called as this alpha value. Probability of committing a type one error. All right, let us move on. Types of errors, we have already discussed this. There's a type one error and there's a type two error. Type one error is also called as alpha risk or the producer's risk. It is the risk of rejecting the null hypothesis when, should you, when you should have accepted it. Action is taken when there should have been no action. You should have been left scot-free. You should have been termed as innocent and left alone. But they have imprisoned, imprisoned you. Though you were innocent, they have imprisoned you, right? That's a type 1 error. What is type 2 error? It is also called as beta risk or consumer risk. The risk of accepting the null when you should have rejected it. No action is taken when there should have been action. Hey, you have committed a murder. You should have been put behind bars. But you were released scot-free, terming that you are innocent, right? Though you have committed a murder, you are released as innocent. That is type two error. Now you will have to balance that out. Type one error is determined upfront by your management or you pick up that value called 5%. It is called as alpha value you have chosen. 1 minus alpha will give you the confidence level. If I'm saying there's a 5% chance that you might go wrong, I'm okay with that as a management person. Then 1 minus alpha, which is 5%, is 95%. And this is called as my confidence level. Type 2 error is determined from the circumstances of the situation. Remember this. If the alpha is made very small, then the beta risk increases. That's okay. That is acceptable in most cases. So there has to be a balancing act which you will have to perform. But that is acceptable. Think about this. Any law, any legal system says that if there is a person who has actually committed a murder, if because of lack of evidence you release him, that is fine. But you have to be extremely, extremely relevant. You have to be extremely cautious when you're sentencing a person to imprisonment because you should never ever imprison a person who is innocent right that is what the legal system says so i'm going to give you very less chance of say five percent that you imprison an innocent person but here probably i'll give you a ten percent leeway of releasing an actually convict so Type 2 error requires overwhelming evidence to reject the null hypothesis, increasing the chances of the type 2 error. To minimize the beta, while holding alpha constant, 
requires you to increase the sample size the amount of data that you have has to increase significantly one minus alpha is called as confidence level and one minus beta is called as power of test it is a probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it was false fine that's a good case basically